In this video, I'll show you how to send crypto from any centralized exchange to any hardware wallet. So if you're using a ledger or a Trezor or anything else, it's the exact same process. The only information that we need to give our crypto exchange is the wallet address that we're sending to, and then also the blockchain that we want to send the asset on. Now, if you're sending a layer one coin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, you'll be sending it over their specific blockchain. So that's super easy. If you're sending stable coins, then there may be a choice of blockchains that you may want to use. That's up to you if you want your stable coins on a specific network like Ethereum or Solana or one of the others, you can choose that. You just get the specific address, tell the crypto exchange which network you want to send it over, and that's where the stable coin will end up on your hardware wallet. We need to get our wallet's deposit address firstly. This is where we're gonna send the crypto. So whether you're using Trezor or Ledger or any other device, you should have an app associated with your wallet. I've got video guides on the majority of hardware wallets. I'll link them down below if you want to know how to set them up, get your addresses and everything else. But it's the same process. Go to the app associated with your wallet and you want to receive coins into your wallet. So for Trezor, it's up here in the top right. You can see there's a receive icon right here. Ledger Live is very, very similar. You want to receive or send crypto into the wallet. So I'm going to press receive here and it says, what do you want to receive? Well, I'm going to receive, let's say, some Bitcoin. So I'm just going to press this. And I've got a Bitcoin address set up. So I press this. And as you can see, this is my address right here that I can send to. Now, I can obviously show this full address. So I'm going to do that right now. It's going to tell me on my hardware device that this is the address. And obviously, I'm checking that the address on the app and the device are exactly the same. And then from here, I just want to copy. So I'm going to copy that address. This is the receive address to my wallet. So. This is the uh, wallet address that we're going to give to the exchange. And obviously, the exchange is going to send to this address, which is the address of our hardware wallet. Now, we simply have to give the exchange the instruction to send the crypto that we want over the blockchain that we want to send it on. So if you use Kraken or Coinbase or Binance or anything else, go to withdraw crypto. That's where you want to uh, put this instruction in. So for Kraken, it's right here where it, where it says withdraw. For other uh, crypto exchanges, it may say send. And if there's other questions about where you want to send it, you want to send it via an on-chain transfer. It will usually be known as on-chain or external or something like that. You want to be sending to an external address over a blockchain, otherwise known as on-chain. And it says, which asset do you want to withdraw? Well, I've got my Bitcoin address, so I'm gonna withdraw some Bitcoin here. And it says, which network do you want to uh, actually send it on? Now, I copied a Bitcoin address. So the Bitcoin network is where I have to send this. If I choose one of these other networks, there's going to be an issue because the address that I'm giving Kraken here is the Bitcoin network address of my hardware wallet. So I want to send it over Bitcoin. If you're sending Ethereum, you want to be sending that over the Ethereum network. Of course, you can use other networks in Ethereum as well, where it gets a little bit complicated. So if you want to send some Ethereum or some stable coins over Arbitrum or Optimism or Base Network or Solana, you just have to make sure that whichever blockchain that you want that asset on, that's where you're sending it. For Bitcoin, it's super simple. You just want to choose a Bitcoin blockchain. From here, it says, how much do you want to send? So I can send any amount. Now, right down here where it says two, you want to make sure that you paste in the address or that you've just copied where you want to send the coins. So I'm actually going to change this and it says add withdrawal address, so I'm going to do that. And then this is where you paste in the address that you want to send that uh, the, the coins to right here. Now for Kraken and other exchanges, you may have to add the address. So I'm going to give it a nickname like this, and then I have to press add. Now Kraken are going to send me an email just to make sure that I can confirm this and everything's OK. Once that withdrawal address is added, then what it will do is go back to this page and just give me the option to send to that specific address. So I can choose the address that I want to send it to like this. And it says, OK, you want to send this amount. This is the network that you're using. And this is the address that you want to send it to. You can review that on most exchanges before you actually go ahead and send. So I'm going to review. It's telling me the amount that I'm sending, the fee. Now, when you use a blockchain, you have to pay a blockchain fee to the blockchain to process that transaction. and each exchange is going to be a little bit different and blockchains may vary, but you're going to have to pay a small fee here. And that's how much we'll receive to the receiving address. We're going to use the Bitcoin network and just make sure that the address that you've copied is exactly the same as the one as your hardware wallet. If you want to send that transaction on most exchanges, there'll be a big button down here that says send or confirm. Just press that and then the exchange will send that coin on the specific network that you've chosen and it will go to the address 
that you've put in here, which hopefully is our hardware wallet. If you're sending stable coins to your wallet or other types of tokenized asset that exist on top of blockchains, then we just have to be way more careful. So for example, on the left-hand side here, I'm gonna send some stable coins to my wallet and I'm gonna use the Arbitrum network. And so I need to make sure that I get the address correct and from the exchange I'm sending on the network that I want to receive it on in my wallet. This is the same for every other hardware wallet. You can add many different accounts on different blockchains. So Arbitrum One is the blockchain that I want to use. And I'm gonna press receive right here. Got it and I need my address. This is my address, so I'm gonna show the address. It's gonna confirm on my hardware wallet that's the same address on my wallet and right here. So yes, I'm gonna press copy. Now from here what I want to do is go over to the exchange. In the exchange I now want to withdraw the stablecoin over the Arbitrum network. So I'm gonna press withdraw and I'm gonna withdraw some Tether, so USDT. And it says which network you want to use. As you can see, many different are supported here. So we have to be really sure that we're sending from the exchange to the network that we want that crypto on. Even though you may have the same address across multiple different networks, if I don't send it over Arbitrum, it's gonna to go to another address on a different network. So I have to make sure I choose the network that I want it on in my wallet, because that's where the crypto will be. So Arbitrum one, and then you can go through that process again put your address in, give it a name, confirm it, and then send it out over, the, over that network. USDT is the same asset across many different networks, but it's not fungible. If you have it on one network, it's not on any of the other networks. And so you need to make sure that you're sending the asset over the network that you actually want the stablecoin or other tokenized asset on. Another thing to be aware of when using wallets and sending crypto into your wallet is that when you want to send crypto back out of your wallet or send it to anybody else or do anything on a blockchain, you have to pay a blockchain fee known as gas. Each blockchain is going to charge this fee and you won't be able to do anything with your coins unless you are able to pay the fees of the blockchain. Each blockchain has its own specific coin that it uses to pay for transaction fees or gas fees. And you have to be really sure that you have enough of that gas in your wallet to pay for transactions. If you want to send stable coins to your wallet, that's fine, but most blockchains don't accept stable coins as gas. So for example, on the Ethereum network, you need some ETH. If you're using Solana, you need Sol. If you're using Base or Arbitrum, they use ETH as well. So let's say that I send a stable coin to my Arbitrum account. I can have $1,000 in there, but if I don't have any ETH, I won't be able to send that money back out. So you would have to also deposit some of the gas coin into your same wallet on the same blockchain. So if I'm using Arbitrum and I've got some USDT, I also need $5 of ETH in that wallet in order to pay for gas fees if I want to swap the coins or send them back out. And that would go to the same address on the same blockchain, but you always need the gas coin on the blockchain that we're using, otherwise you can't do anything else with the coins in your wallet. You can easily buy all of these coins on your centralized exchange and send them out to your same wallet, so no issues. I've got video guides on wallets and exchanges if you want to know how to use them all, and some links below in the description on the exchanges I use, you can get some great deposit and trading bonuses via those links. I'm James, it's Manzi G, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.